Hey guys, and welcome to Functional Print Friday. So what I've got on the bench this week is a spindle protector for the nose of the spindle on my lathe. If you remember, a couple videos back, we made this guy uh, to set the, uh, the correct tension on the bearings of my lathe that I'm rebuilding. And what I didn't really mention at the time was that a good portion of this design was actually based on the work that I'd already done um, for a spindle protector that I made for this machine, actually before I even disassembled it to rebuild it. When I made this piece, all I really had to do was just take my spindle protector design, um, flatten this off here, and then add essentially the spool uh, to the front of it and a couple other features to retain the string and stuff like that. Um, if you're interested in this and you didn't see that video, I will link it down below, or you can also just find it in my videos list. So what's a spindle protector? Well, I'll tell you what, let's go over to the lathe. I think it'll make more sense if I show you. Okay, we're over here at the lathe, and right now the lathe has a chuck installed on it. This is a three-jaw chuck, and in fact the jaws aren't on here right now, um, but this is currently mounted on the spindle of the lathe. So I can remove this chuck. So let me do that, I'll show you what I mean. So the way that the chuck is retained on this particular type of lathe is with an L-style spindle. This is an L00 spindle, so there's a large uh, nut here uh, that moves and will actually, it, it essentially drives the chuck off of the spindle nose. If you watch as I turn this, it's going to push this chuck off the spindle nose. This chuck is heavy, so I need two hands here. Let me set it down. All right, so now we've got a good look at the spindle of the lathe, and this is the uh, the taper here that the chuck or whatever you're putting on the lathe actually seats onto. Um, and then there's also another taper inside here, and then this goes all the way through for long stock uh, that would go all the way through the spindle of the lathe. And then we've got a large nut on here, and this guy's, this is on here, this does not come off. There is a, there's a bolt that we can remove here uh, and a key on the back that would allow us to take this off, but this is intended to stay on here. This essentially tightens anything down onto the lathe uh, as far as like a chuck or other accessory would go that we'd put on here. In fact, let me grab the, the piece that we made before. So this piece that we made previously, uh, this keyway here would line up with this key. And then we turn this, and this tightens it on. And then we were able to pull on this to set the, uh, the correct preload on the bearings. Now, you can use this lathe without a chuck. Uh, if you wanted to use collets on this lathe, uh, Boxford, the company that manufactured this lathe, uh, supplies this adapter sleeve uh, that goes into, you can tell by the, the taper on this piece here, it goes into a taper on the inside of the spindle, uh, and then you would use a collet on the inside here. Couple problems. Uh, number one, this guy is going to be clanking around as, as this lathe is turning. If I turn this lathe on right now, this guy is going to, it's going to stay stationary at first, and it's going to kind of catch up with the spindle, and it's going to be clanking all around. Not particularly safe. Second problem is, I just barely yeah, well, even just actually barely putting it in there, it holds pretty well. So tapers work by having large uh, surface area contact uh, where a little bit of inward pressure gives you a tremendous amount of gripping force um, in the rotational axis. Well, it also has a pretty good grip um, in the horizontal axis here on the lathe as well. Even just lightly tapping it, this guy gets in there pretty well. It's hard to pull out. And if I was actually using this for a collet, I would need to give this, well, I wouldn't really, I wouldn't whack it with a hammer, but I'd take it and I'd give it a good knock into there, uh, just with my hand, I'd just force it in. Now I'm not do, oh, almost did it. <laughs> I'm not doing that right now because this guy would be really hard to get out of here. I might even have to come from the other side of the spindle uh, and drive this guy out with, uh, you know, like a piece of wood dowel or something like that. So how can we solve both these problems? Well. That's where the spindle nose protector comes in. So we have the same keyway here. So this guy is going to fit over this just like this. And then this captured nut is going to turn, drawing this in. Okay, so we've already solved one problem. If I turn this lathe on, this guy's not going to be clanking around anymore. In fact, actually, I'll plug it in and turn it on for you. All right, so you can see with this guy spinning up, um, this, this isn't clanking around at all. We have no uh, dangerous movement up here in the area of the, uh, the spindle of the lathe. Uh, and this is running true to the spindle. 
So let me stop this and I'll show you the other feature of this. So now when I take this adapter here that we would use with collets in this lathe and I give it a knock in there, I'm not going to be able to pull that out. Just with that little bit of force going in there, this is now in there. I'm not going to get this out just by pulling on it with my hand or working it back and forth. I could probably drive it out from the other side of the spindle that you can't see over there. The spindle goes all the way through about 14 inches in that direction. Um, but what this allows me to do now, because this is threaded, all right, I turned off the, uh, the VFD that drives the motor on this guy. That fan's annoying. So now what I can do is remember, this is captured on here and there's threads on this piece. So as I turn this nut, at first the nut starts to back off. Now look what it's doing. See, it's pushing that spindle nose protector forward. And what that's gonna do is that's actually gonna drive this adapter piece out of here. And here, let me put this in back gear so that it essentially locks up the spindle. And now, as I continue to turn this, it just popped. What that did was drive this piece out. Let me show you again. So that's where it would be when I'm running the lathe. Knock this guy in. As I turn this, it's gonna put, come out and put pressure on this. It just popped and drive that right out of our spindle. Uh, I call it a spindle nose protector. Uh, I guess that's sort of the third function. This taper here is very important. This is essentially what determines the accuracy of the, the lathe is uh, the, the surface finish on the spindle. Obviously the bearings and everything needs to run true, but this is sort of where the rubber meets the road as to an implement that you're putting onto the, the lathe, uh, you know, various type of chucks or a faceplate uh, controls how true that is going to run and how repeatable that's going to be. So we want to protect this face. We don't, if we did have just this piece in here, and had a collet in here, and we're machining something, and chips are flying all around or start to wrap around the spindle, we damage the surface, we ruin the accuracy of the lathe. Yeah. You know, these tapers are so, yeah, there we go. I was able to turn it out that time. I just barely set it in place. But it's amazing how little force it takes to set one of these tapers and how hard it is to get out. Uh, but by essentially using the screw here, we get a tremendous amount of leverage pushing in that horizontal direction uh, to pop this guy out. So uh, obviously this works on this lathe. This is a Boxford uh, VSL lathe. There are a bunch of other lathes out there that use this L00 type spindle. This is not particular to this lathe. This should work on any lathe with an L00 spindle. They're not super popular now. Uh, this lathe was made in the mid to late 70s. Uh, there's a whole bunch of other lathes, a bunch of American lathes. This, in fact, it's called an American L00 spindle. Uh, so you'll find this same, the same type of spindle on a lot of American-made lathes at the time, uh, and lathes made in other places that were intended for the American market. So, as always, I'll put the STL for this uh, down, uh, link to it down in the description of the video if you're interested in checking that out. All of my designs are free for you to download. Um, they're not free for you to download and sell to someone else, but they are free for you to download, uh, you know, print for yourself and use for your own use. So if you've got a 3D printer and this would be valuable for you on your lathe, uh, please download the STL and print it out. Uh, if you are not into 3D printing, but you happen to find this video and you're interested in one of these, I am going to make these available for sale in my Pirate Moto store. And I'll link that down below uh, as well. Uh, and I think I'll put this guy up there as well. This is the best method I've seen for correctly sending, setting the, uh, the preload for the spindle bearings uh, on these older lathes. Uh, it's essentially what the, the procedure and the manual details, but with a very specific diameter. So we get a one-to-one -one, uh, measurement uh, for setting our, our preload. So uh, let's go take a look at the design for this. I'll open it up and see if there's anything that I missed. I remember this guy being a bear uh, to create, uh, particularly the specific uh, threads for this, and then getting the taper in the right position. I, went, I think I went through a couple different iterations. It's amazing how for a 3D printed part, how nicely this sits on here and how true it runs. In fact, you know what? Let me go get a dial indicator. Let's, uh, let's put this on here and see just how true uh, this tapered face here um, actually runs uh, on this when it mounted up on the lathe. Try 
I do my best to get this as much in frame as we can. Set our preload. So can you guys see that face? All right, there we go. So I'm gonna turn the spindle. We'll see how much run out we have on this 3D printed part. So I see a lot of bouncing around just on the surface finish. But I'm not seeing more than two thousandths of an inch. And honestly, I think a lot of that surface finish, it seems to, it'll bounce to two thousandths on either side, but then comes back to within one thou. Yeah. So this printed part, uh, you know, just plain old default uh, profile, it is a 0.1 layer height, um, and this is run on a Prusa i3 Mark III, but we're within, if we don't count the, the aberration from the surface finish, we are within 2 thou total included run out on this part, which is, <laughs> honestly, I think it's pretty impressive. So uh, let me know down in the comments if, uh, if you guys have done anything similar like this, done any custom tooling um, or adapters for either lathes or milling machines. I feel like I'm just kind of scratching the surface with this. And I've got some ideas on getting even better accuracy. I, I've had some thoughts about, uh, particularly for some things for the mill uh, and other parts where uh, a plastic part would suffice from a, a durability perspective, but the accuracy is really key. I don't see why you couldn't uh, essentially get close to on dimension with 3D printing and then actually machine it to a very tight tolerance. Like if I spun this lathe up right now, if I had the saddle on here, uh, I don't see why we couldn't essentially machine this down to, you know, to essentially run perfectly if we needed it for um, an adapter for something else. So let's go open up the design for this, uh, take a look and see if there's anything that I missed. All right, and here is the design for this. And when I dug up the file, I had it marked as version 20. So suffice to say, I did go through quite a few iterations until I was satisfied with the fit of the, the threading um, as well as the, the internal taper, uh, but it does fit really, really nicely. Uh, the thread draws it right down onto this taper and I have the same relief uh, in here uh, to match the, that chuck that I had that I took dimensions off and the keyway here as well. Um, I designed this back in 2019. It was one of the, the earlier, more complex designs that I did while I was learning SketchUp Make. And uh, I, I think actually this is the design that I did that I learned the feature of, you can draw like uh, uh, this, this feature here uh, that gives you sort of the grip on, uh, on this uh, outside dimension. You can draw it once and then say how many duplicates of it you want and how many degrees of rotation uh, you want each one on and uh, the circumference that you're putting it on. So I only had to draw, just as an example, uh, this feature to give you grip on here uh, one time and then essentially uh, just filled it in all the way around. Uh, and then I also added sort of a tag here on the side that defines that this is for the L00 uh, spindle taper. And that is recessed uh, in here. Uh, you can see kind of from the side view there. And then we have a nice uh, large flat surface here uh, on the top uh, to push that, uh, that adapter piece out of the, the spindle that is used for collets. Uh, this guy is not printed solid, but it is printed with, I think I did this with three layers uh, and quite a few solid layers on the top and bottom so that we get a lot of strength in these threads because we're counting on these threads uh, to generate the horizontal force to push against uh, the spindle adapter uh, with this face out here. And then we also need that same thickness out here on this face to be strong. Um, the overall design of the part, uh, you know, it does have a lot of strength. Uh, both the threaded section down here and this part up here is pretty thick. In fact, here, if I see here, if I turn on hidden geometry and we knock out a couple of these pieces here, you can see we have quite a bit of meat uh, all throughout this part. So your infill doesn't necessarily have to be that high, but you do want um, some nice wall thickness just for strength where we're pushing against essentially the ramp on these threads and we're pushing against the face out here. Uh, again, if you don't have a 3D printer and you're interested in getting one of these for your lathe, 
uh, check out the links below. I will make these available on my site. It's probably the number one question I get on these videos is where is the STL and also do you sell the print? And yeah, both of those are an option. I don't sell very many of my prints. I just, I don't think there's that much of a market for it. Uh, but I, m I will make this one available for sale and the STL will be available for free download for non-commercial use. So guys, thanks for tuning in and hanging out with me this week uh, in the shop and taking a look at this design. I do a new video like this every single Friday that features uh, something that improves an existing product or might be, you know, a completely from scratch uh, design. If you're into that sort of thing, hit that like button. It's going to tell YouTube that, hey, that's what you're into. And if you want to see more of me doing this type of stuff, hit that subscribe button. Guys, if you do, I'll see you next Friday.